Hello everyone, how's it going? I hope that you had an amazing day and a very profitable run in the market at the moment. If things are very challenging, just remember that you know the good moments, just like the bad, will always flow away. Now that you have read the title of the video and decided to click on the thumbnail, I bet that there's at least one question that is flashing in your mind. How is Tesla doing right now? How low can it fall? And should you buy now in order to make more money by scooping up the bottom? So over the past few years, as we now have to face the consequences of rising inflation, as well as increasing job uncertainties, and a slow phase out of what used to be very certain, we now have to find our own salvation in order to reach financial well-being and independence. So in order to secure our own finances, we need to find promising opportunities that's going to offer us a lot of growth potentials. And NASDAQ in this regard has been such a place with plenty of exciting opportunities to offer. Now, if the past few years have taught us anything, as far as stocks go, is that Tesla is definitely one of the biggest names navigating those exciting and yet volatile waters. One of the major advantages that we have when choosing more well-known brands and companies in any given field is that they tend to be the first to react to any new macroeconomic announcements, as many see companies of such as, like such a scale to be representative to the market appetite for risk. Any industry-wide catalyst, any change in central bank interest rate, and any major event that may affect geopolitical and supply chains um, on a global scale will all have like incidents on the price action of companies like Tesla. In fact, there's another one as well. Whatever Elon decides to put on his own social media, X, formerly known as Twitter, is also going to influence or might influence um, like the price action of Tesla, the crown jewel of his own little kingdom. But just like with any stock, it's very crucial to understand what kind of epoch and what kind of phase we are in and what would be the best decision to make given the current circumstances. So in today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into Tesla and see if it's a decent choice that would fit with your portfolio. Now, before I continue to talk about Tesla, I just want to take this moment to welcome all of you who are either returning viewers or who just happened to stumble upon my channel for the first time. I hope that you're going to get something that will benefit your trades in these analysis videos. And of course, obviously, that's not financial advice, but it's certainly made with my honest opinions that I believe are worthwhile to share. I hope that you're going to enjoy today's video and please consider to like, comment, and to subscribe if you want to see more analysis pieces on Tesla and many other ones. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So the first thing that we're going to look at is how has Tesla from a like a price action perspective has been doing. Now it for sure has to navigate like a pretty complex and sometimes ambiguous landscape, presenting investors with both challenges and also opportunities. So the daily performance showcases a range of movements from around $183 to uh, almost like $185. And over the past five days, Tesla's trend has been pretty much downward uh, with a decrease of around, say, 10% without any significant support in sight. Given that the previous support has now been pierced through over the course of one day, which may be the like the new support line after the resistance of $197 has been reached and surpassed. Now, when we go to like the one month perspective, the stock has experienced a decrease of 5%, which is a significant downward pressure that has been observed since the beginning of March. And so far, the price action seems to be like it's still on its way. Uh, whatever that is happening right now might just be the beginning and not certainly not the end. A broader view that covers like the past six months now reveals that Tesla is currently positioned at like the lower end of a bearish channel, reflecting an overall decline of 16%, recovering from a bottom of around $181. This sustained trend over a more sustained period of time does suggest a more persistent bearish sentiment from the investors. And in fact, if anything, 
We're going to talk a bit more about why that might be the case uh, just in a moment. Now, if we take a look at the options, the current strike prices seem to center around like $180 to $185. Um, understanding that like the relevance of options is really crucial. They give you the right, but not the obligation to buy and sell a stock at a predetermined strike price within a specific, like a specific period. These financial instruments can be used to hedge against like potential losses or to speculate on future price movements. Now for Tesla, they play a vital role in not only managing the risk, but increasing people's exposure without owning uh, the equity outright. Now, what they say is that the market does expect significant like volatilities uh, around those prices. And also, it seems like the volume favors somewhat uh, the put options, meaning they give you the right to sell at a specific price. This is what people buy when they when they expect like um, Tesla might bite the dust or Tesla may have like a serious price crunch in the foreseeable future. That's when they do it. So when we analyze the recent volumes, we can see that the volume is relatively down. But this doesn't mean a lot because Tesla is one of the most traded stocks around, uh, like around Nasdaq, right? So it's not like people don't know about the stock or people don't want to make money from it. It's just that right now, the volume might be decreasing um, because, well, people are not sure where the stock is going, where Elon is going, where the industry and also the economy that Tesla depends on is going. So this is why the volume might be down. And um, we may see this tendency to go on for some time still. Now, if we take a step back, and to look at Tesla, it certainly stands out as a significant player as a significant as a good company, leading an industry that is certainly a very young industry. Um, it has a lot of promising uh, aspects and also challenging ones for the retail investors. So it's very important to examine each one of them and to determine if Tesla is really for you. The need of retail investors is to identify stocks that can grow a lot in the future. So Tesla is a dominant player in the EV sector, which aligns with, you know, this demand. The electrification of the automobiles uh, represents a pretty transformative shift and Tesla's position as a front runner does have a lot of appeal. Now, of course, just like any other stock, Tesla does face its own like little challenges. One of them might be, you know, at some point, the EV sector has to go through some sort of reckoning. Till now, it has been priced as a Silicon Valley tech company. But at some point, maybe for an increasing number of people, we're going to start valuing um, like EV companies as manufacturing companies. And by then, well, I feel like we're going to we're going to have like one zero less. It's that sort of difference as far as EV companies go. Of course, Tesla might be exceptional in this regard because it does have a lot of prop like proprietary um, technologies, but for many other companies, they don't. They basically just Lego together some sort of a car and they sell it. They buy different pieces from different other uh, subcontractors or suppliers, and then they couple together some sort of vehicle. You know, so for those kinds of companies, they may have a pretty high market cap, they may have like pretty good valuations, but the fundamentals simply don't support it. And for the longest period of time, we didn't care. We bought it because we expect that somebody else will be willing to buy it at a higher price. And this is the like the fundamental reason why back in 2020 to 2022, I would say, um, people wanted to buy EV shares. You know, it's going to change the world. It's going to be amazing. Uh, it's 
also something that's going to pollute a lot. That's that's I guess what EV people don't don't necessarily uh, always put emphasis on. Meaning uh, the rare earth that is required to make the batteries, they often are extremely polluting to extract. So, you know, th there's definitely a lot of downsides with EVs that we haven't necessarily um, fully disclosed yet. And now that we see that many auto giants are rolling back their EV expansion programs, it does leave um, a bit of doubt in many people's mind in regarding like, is this thing going to continue ever at all? You know, are we going to still talk about EVs 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Because if the industry doesn't remain relevant, then that's going to be an issue. In fact, this should be like the... Um, this should be an assumption going in. Like, if you're someone who believes that um, the EV industry is going to stay relevant, then definitely, by all means, buy Tesla, buy NEO, buy um, XPEN, buy Lucid. You know, these are all decent companies, I suppose. But if you don't even believe that uh, the EV sector is going to do well in a few decades, that it's going to be replaced by something, say, uh, fuel cell, then we would need to put like a question mark on the relevance and the pertinence of purchasing something like Tesla. It's a very expensive stock. Yes, it's making money, but lots of companies make money. Yes, it's a car manufacturers. Lots of companies manufacture cars, right? Um, yes, it's a EV company. Yes, it doesn't consume any sort of fossil fuel. But it's very polluting. And what if in 20 years we're going to have hydrogen cars? So is that going to affect the valuation of EV? Is that going to make EV just something like a, like a little meme? Uh, just like the, the dot-com boom companies back then. It's possible. Okay. And this is what's tricky when investing in, uh, in the NASDAQ. A lot of those companies, either they set a new trend or they crash and burn. Sometimes it's both. Like they're going to both crash and burn and also set a trend before they do so. So um, the people who have held, held on to Tesla, you may remember that back then, like if we were, if we go back to like, say, 2018, 2019, there were an increasing number of doubts. Uh, on like the the solvency of Tesla. They were trying to sell themselves to other companies. I think Apple was one of them. And, you know, the, the pandemic hit, then the world shut down, and all of a sudden, Tesla went parabolic. So if this is the timeline of events, then we need to ask ourselves, uh, is that a normal course of action for a company, regardless how promising it might look like? You know, so um, we, I would say that going forward, uh, Tesla is definitely something to still consider if you believe in the EV sector, if you believe that the technology that Tesla has is amazing. I think that a lot of it is. For example, um, their autom their automated driving technology is certainly uh, head and shoulders above the comp like the competition. Except, as far as the rest is concerned, I think it's very subjective and sometimes very. Um, how can I put this? It's a bit like a Schrodinger's cat situation, where there's like a sweet spot, a a gold lock uh, place where everything just fits, everything just flows. And outside of this, the, the, the boundaries of that region, then things suddenly don't, like, they, they don't match anymore. They don't, they don't work as well anymore. So this is what I sometimes worry about with not only, like, EV stocks like Tesla or Lucid and Rivian, but also, you know, if, if you really think about it, I cover a lot of uh, Palantir on my channel. If you really think about it, like, Palantir is the same thing, right? 
yeah, it seems cool, it seems edgy, it seems, you know, controversial, and it seems like their CEO is someone who can, who can intrigue you. Yes, oh, and by the way, sh need I say more, they also make money, like it's a cash flow positive company. But does it mean that taking data from other parties, analyzing them, does it mean that working with DARPA, working with the army, working with some of the biggest corporations in the world, is that necessarily going to be a very compelling story forever? Now, in my case, I, I actually think that uh, Palantir is, because they actually don't m rely that much on their image in order to make money, but they're but their like performance or their uh, technical know-how. Whereas for Tesla, not only do they rely on the real economy, but they also rely on the subjective part of the retail consumers' um, collective psyche. That Tesla must be a cool brand in order for it to work. And this means that we have to be careful with how is Tesla being uh, perceived in not only the market, but like the in a dealership, for example, or sorry, not the dealership, but like Tesla. Well, yeah, Tesla owned dealerships. And if owning a Tesla stops being cool for people, then, you know, it might be game over for this um, extremely highly priced company. So, for people who still remember Black, I think it's BlackBerry. Yeah, for people who still remember BlackBerry, you might recall that back then it was super popular to own one. Okay, like almost everyone wanted to have one. Then the smartphones arrived, and then nobody talks about uh, black phones. Uh, sorry, Blackberries anymore. It's a it's a bit similar here. Like, um, yes, it's cool until it's not. And we don't know when it stops being cool. Right? And we have to remember that bigger behemoths have failed before. So we have to factor in uh, those aspects when thinking about when thinking about like Tesla. And it kind of goes in the same um, it, it kind of goes in the same spirit that we would have to be careful regarding Elon. We don't know what Elon is going to do. We don't know what he uh, he might pull off or in order to you know pursue his own financial gain, what he's going to do on social media, what he's going to do regarding his companies, um, how is he going to be perceived and the relationship between the perception of him versus the perception of his companies and so on. Um, so at the filming of this video, People have been talking about how, like, uh, Elon tried. Oh, by the way, uh, as we as we're filming this, so we're in early March of 2024. Elon is suing OpenAI, right? And uh, OpenAI actually published a like an email uh, about how he tried to control OpenAI and to make it like a for-profit company. So. There's a lot to be said regarding this. Obviously, there's no, there's not always like a right or wrong answer to that kind of situations. But still, like this may leave a bad taste in people's mouth. And also, we're in an we're in an election year. So what this means is that what influential people in the in the U.S. say and do and support um, is going to have an impact on like the the brand that those people own okay because the elections tend to be a very how can i put this a very weird ecosystem of its own that takes on life that we don't necessarily control and by then we don't even know what's going on before we see a trend emerging right um if you know decides to 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 support and to endorse um, Donald Trump, then you know who knows what that's gonna do. 
right? Who knows what that's going to do to the brand image? And who knows what that's going to do uh, to the sales of Tesla and then the financial performance of Tesla and so on? Um, so going forward, I know that, that I've been saying a lot of things and maybe many of them are perceived to be like negative for Tesla. But simply put, I would be careful. Like, I would be careful with how things are going. And I would be careful, especially considering that Tesla for some time now has been showing uh, some weakness in the market, probably because it rose so much. It rose so much, and um, now people are, like, left holding a bag, a very expensive bag, mind you. And they're wondering, should they dump at a, you know, small loss? Or should they dump later at a potentially much, much larger loss when what I said previously regarding the perception and the larger trends and the ongoing election seasons, uh, they all play out. And if they play out like against the interest of Tesla. So, so right now, the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis, I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surge in commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe threatening the purchasing power, raising the input costs, and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk-return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, Agricultural products have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility plus the reduced investors' appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties, and social unrests, will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the US equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience, and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. 
So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. With that being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, sectors, or regions. All right, so having said all this, you know, what is my overall opinion about Tesla? I think that Tesla represents very much uh, the risk appetite of the industry, and more specifically, how desirable is the EV industry. In other words, if Nasdaq is attractive, Tesla will do good. If EV is is attractive, Tesla will do fine. If both of them are attractive, then Tesla is going to do great, and vice versa. What I see now is that Nasdaq is at its historical peak. Um, the EV sector is lackluster at best. So we're probably talking about a pretty like um, mixed image or situation regarding Tesla's current uh, outlook. So if you're someone who believed that EV is going to remain relevant in the years to come and the decades to come, then Tesla might be a decent buy, but I would say to like slowly trickle in. If you have some doubts, if you're on the fence about if having EVs is the best way to go regarding like um, saving the environment, saving like reducing the fossil energy for real, changing the way energy has been consumed, then I would say to maybe look elsewhere, to look for other projects, industries, um, and like companies to invest in. So here's a quick example. It's not yet like an industry, but you know, the like cold fusion, I believe it's that, right? A uh, cold fusion, uh, reactors have been a thing recently it's not in like it's not ready for commercial use yet but if that becomes a thing then we will have like a new source of um, energy uh, to, to to play with and to add in the portfolio so how's that going to affect the rest of the players including the evs if hydrogen cars become uh, sufficiently mature to be deployed commercially, how is that going to affect the EV sector, right? So because of all this, I would say that if you have any sort of doubt regarding the EV, then it's better not to buy it. It's better to maybe just let go some potential profits instead of holding a very expensive bag. Um, if you believe in Tesla, if you believe that you know, this company is great. It's going to still be doing great because of um, like the EV craze will never stop or it's going to come back. Then, yes, you can buy it. Personally, I currently don't own any share of Tesla, not just because of the reasons that I mentioned of the doubts that I may have, but also because the price of Tesla kind of um, is kind of knocking away the the risk profile or the exposure diversification. Um, if you want to buy Tesla, I would say to keep it between like 10%, maybe like eight to 10% of your portfolio. And if you hold any Tesla, I would say that the long-term holding is definitely better than the short-term trading. 